Welcome to your show, Identities Umtlo Bojatiri, your show that talks about your social, economic, and political issues. Today, the, on the show, we are talking about a lovely topic that we all have to be thinking about, the issues of children. Where are the children? We have started a new dispensation, and we want to put the children at the center of the dispensation. And to talk about the issues of children today, I have the wonderful uh, Reverend Tyler Nyonete from ZNCWC. I'll have him introduce himself a little bit. And I have the wonderful Daphne, who's coming from Childline. Welcome. Reverend, introduce yourself. I am Tyler Nyonete. Mm -hmm. I'm the National Director for Zimbabwe National Council for the Welfare of Children. Right. And I have been for the last 10 years. Wonderful. I'm I've acquired, you know, considerable knowledge around children's issues. And you've been advocating, we've been seeing you in Zimbabwe regionally and internationally as well. You refer to the new dispensation. Right. And uh, from the child rights sector, mm -hmm. um, we want the laws to be aligned. Right. The children's laws to the new constitution. Right. And this, I can say, are the last ones mm -hmm. among the 400. Right. laws that were to be aligned. Mm -hmm. And just to be specific, mm -hmm. there are um, two or so laws. One of them is the, the main one, the Children's Act, mm -hmm. which is which has been totally revised. Okay. So a new right. one is being tabled. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And there is a new one, the Justice for Children Bill. Okay. And this makes reference to children Reverend, I'll come back to you. I want to hear more about that. But what I'm hearing from your introduction, the activist in you cannot wait, I know. Mm -hmm. What I'm hearing from you already is the need to align the laws that protect children. True. I'll hold your thought and come back to you. Please introduce yourself. Thank you very much, Nyari. My name is Daphne Jenna. I'm the communications and documentation officer for Chad and Zimbabwe which is an organization that runs a national helpline, mm -hmm. uh, which is contacted through the number 116, which right. children and young people, right. anyone below the age of 18 can call mm -hmm. um, and ask for assistance with any issue concerning their welfare, concerning their rights. Right. Uh, our organization has been in operation for 20 years, mm -hmm. and we are also a member of the mother body of Child Helplines, which okay. is Child Helplines International. Right. Well, thank you very much. And I think at this point, I will come back to you, um, Reverend. You were already beginning to let us know the, or the existing the kind of work that's been done around the alignment, which you feel is one of the issues that needs to be done around uh, the new dispensation. Please proceed. Yes. Um, I was talking about the new Justice for Children Bill. Yes which is being introduced, mm -hmm. and this one is spearheaded, spearheaded by the Minister of Justice. Right. Uh, they've done their consultations. Right. I'm not sure exactly where they are, but uh, this is a new piece, and it looks at children in conflict with the law. Mm, nice. Um, it also speaks to the age of, the criminal age. Mm -hmm. In the moment, it's seven. Okay. For children. Mm. So if a child commits a crime, it's seven. Mm. They can be taken to court. All right. Oh, and one yes. wonders mm. if a child can commit a crime at right. seven. It's seven. Right. There are also issues of uh, age of consent, mm -hmm. which is a 12. Currently a 12. Currently a 12. Mm -hmm. And the argument, how do we raise it to where? Okay. 16, 18, mm -hmm. debate is still raging on that one. All right. Yeah. But definitely, if you say that the age of majority is 18, and then you want to separate that with age of consent for children, how, how does that work? At one point, you feel like they can make decisions to empower their own lives. For instance, a child below the age of 18 cannot get into a contract, right? We're saying they're too young. But then when it comes to consenting for uh, criminal activities, when it comes to consenting for maybe child marriages, you guys are beginning to then consider to say you don't know. I, is this not hypocrisy from the child's rights point of view? What do you think? 
I think definitely there is a conflict there because when we are saying a child below the, ch the age of 18 need guidance, they right. need someone to speak on their behalf. Yeah. It should be on all matters right. because issues to do with him, them being involved in sexual activities right. or getting married would definitely affect how they continue with their education, mm -hmm. how they interact with other children. Right. So it is a problem that we have the age of consent being 12 and the age where we cut off to say someone is an adult mm -hmm. is 18. So there we definitely need to have an alignment where everything starts from 18. Reverend, what do you think? In terms of a contract, yes, yeah. age of 18. Is not getting into conflict with law a contract? Is not deciding to get married or to have sex an important contract in the life of a child? The engaging in sex is not necessarily a contract. Um, it's, but are it, we... Are we, okay, so maybe I just use the word contract as yeah. an example. When we're talking about a child being a major or a, a, a child being a minor, yes, part of it is being a contract, but the fundamentals are just, it's not about the contract. It's about the, the thought that they're too young to make important decisions. I just use the contract as an example. So are we then saying that maybe issues to do with sex, sex issues to do with criminality are not important issues that have a defining moment in the life of a child. When we are putting those things in, in place like the age of majority, age of consent, are we not, are we driven by the protection of children or we are di driven by the protecting of ourselves? The issue is about the best interests of the child. Right. And what that means is that children have to participate when it comes to um, that age of consent. Right. If they do not participate, adults may not reach the decision that is also in the best interest of children. So right. adequate consultation is necessary to arrive at the age of consent. But definitely when it comes to marriage, it has to be 18. You heard it for yourself, viewers. The Reverend Daphne talking about the age of consent the best interests of the child what do you say what do you do in your own household in your own community don't go away join us after this break welcome back viewers to your program Identities um Shatiri, the show that talks about issues that affect you, issues that affect your children, your communities. Today we're talking about putting children at the center of this dispensation. And we had Reverend Yanete talking about the issues of making the best interest of the child when we're making decisions, uh, putting the children at the center, aligning the issues of, of, of the constitution to make sure that our children are, are protected. Definitely I want I, I want to come back to you. I felt like when Reverend Yanete was explaining that um, there's a difference between a contract and a difference between um, when children get in contact with, um, get in contract or conflict with the law or make decisions such as sexual decisions. And I feel like if we say that contract is more important, when you're making a contract, it's, it's, we need you to be 18. Then we can negotiate when you can make decisions that define who you become in your future. I feel like short changes the children. When we protect contracts and we say a child cannot make a contract when they're below 18, we are protecting ourselves. And then when we say, then we, on the left, we say um, to make a decision to get, uh, to get married or to consent for sex, which we know has a, a long life bearing. Well, we cannot really make a decision for you as adults. You probably could, Kabanga 12, Kabanga 16, are we putting the protection of children at heart? I think, it, it, like you are saying, I think when we are making the laws or when we are arguing for these policies, it is also confusing. And it, you end up trying to balance between giving the child rights and also protecting the child at the, right. at the, at the same time. So that's where we end up having laws that will, we say maybe at this point the child can make their own decision. Mm -hmm. But from my point of view, I'm looking at the the overall mm. welfare of the child. Right. Whereby I am saying what a child does in one aspect mm -hmm. will definitely affect them 
in another aspect. Right. So there when we are saying, what can a child do when they are below 18? Mm. That child cannot work. Right. That child, the labor laws will not allow mm -hmm. that child to go and exactly. look for employment. Right, right. right. So to them, they will feel that, okay, me deciding whether I want to engage in sexual activities or getting married is my choice. But we're also looking at that child, if they will be able to exercise their mm. right, right and be responsible right. at the same exactly. time. So and how does a child become responsible below the child the age of 18? It is, it is impossible for them to become responsible at that time because they do not have access or resources to be responsible. For example, if a child becomes pregnant and they have a child at 15, right. they are responsible for that baby, right. but it will end up being the parents or the grandparents right. who have to be responsible for the mother of the child mm. and the baby. Because like Rev was saying, mm. there's the medical development, the biological mm -hmm. development mm. that happens. Mm -hmm. Let's just say the money is there. Right. The body may fail to exactly. even cater yeah. for that mm. young girl who's 15 and her baby. And also the fact that the opportunities that it takes away from this young, this young mom who's supposed to be in school, who's supposed to be continuing with her education, now suddenly she has to be a mother. The trauma, the changes in that. Uh, Reverend, coming to you, we want to put back. Um, yes, we already started unpacking the issues of laws. What are some of the issues that are affecting children that we feel like in this current dispensation we need to address for children? Um, one of the issues, mm -hmm. which is evidence-based, right. is that children are becoming sexually active right. at an early age. Mm -hmm. That is scientific research. Okay. And if you are um, to intervene or mitigate, mm -hmm. you need to find a way of dealing with that. Right. That's why I was talking about the age of marriage mm -hmm. is opposed in terms of sexual activeness. Okay. And my view is that mm. we need to bring in the children. At one point, Vana, Vadiki, when they are below the age of 18, then to that result, Ibo Tiba engage in my decisions, Akava Kosher. To what extent are we engaging them? Vana Vakati, well, we are 12 or 13 years old. It, we feel like it's important for us to be, to be allowed to 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 have sex or something like that How, where do we start or where do we end right as i said um, earlier child participation is important in that this particular process so that we get their thoughts and views around um when they are actually sexually active and what should be done but on the other hand uh, there's evidence which shows so it means there is research already done around the topic mm -hmm. which can help inform but also the um, there are other agencies like the zimbabwe national uh, family planning mm -hmm. council mm -hmm. which already is talking about youth friendly centers right what i'm not sure is at what age are they providing information mm. to the young people in my view is that it could be below 18. right the time they are providing that information Okay. So when that happens, what, what they are basically doing is provide information and let individuals then make a decision to say, what, what, what is my future? What do I want out of myself? So child participation will be critical in this particular debate. Yes, I, I hear that, Reverend, but to what level do we then protect our children while we're giving them the room to participate. I think that is my question. That is the question that you as the viewers have to be thinking about. You can join us on Identities, Um Club, or Shatiri on Facebook. But before I, I, I want to come back to you, uh, Devlin, and say, according to you, Reverend has mentioned the issue of uh, child comprehensive sexuality education and participation of children in decision making. To you, what are the critical issues that the government right now needs to be thinking about as far as the new dispensation is concerned regarding children? I think the issues that the government needs to be thinking is a comprehensive approach mm -hmm. to protecting child rights. Right. Because we have programs, yes, that try to address children's issues when it comes to education, mm -hmm. when it comes to their welfare, but mm -hmm. we always find one or two children who fall somewhere along the cracks. Right. Be it in terms of documentation, mm -hmm. yes, we know that a single parent now can get a documentation mm -hmm. from 
from the right. registrar's yeah. office. But we have those children where they may not be a father, mm. they may not be a mother. Exactly. And when there, there is no information that is available, mm. no paperwork that is available, right. such that when they get to a certain office, they are found wanting, mm. they are not able to be assisted. We still have, that is one of the examples that I'm seeing. Even in the education assistance, mm -hmm. there are some children who may not have fit the the cri criteria that mm. the government assists those children. Talking on. about education, I want to come back to you and Reverend Nyanete. For us to talk about the status of our education in Zimbabwe, viewers, this is an amazing discussion that's talking about our children, putting our children at the center of the dispensation. Don't go away, join us in the next segment. to your program identities today's discussion putting the children at the center of the dispensation i'm joined here by reverend Nyanyete from zlc wc daphne from uh child line daphne when we went away you were you had already started talking about the issues of education with children i want to know what is the status of education and what are some of the vulnerabilities that you've encountered when you were working with children with as child line? I think right now when you're looking at the status of our education, we mm -hmm. are going through so many changes that have started from the previous year. Right. And I think parents, children, and teachers themselves are still trying to adjust to mm -hmm. those changes. Mm -hmm. So to the new government that is in charge right now, mm -hmm. they need to prioritize those challenges that teachers are facing, that mm -hmm. children are facing, mm -hmm. either in accommodating the new curriculum, mm -hmm. accessing material, right. be it the production of the material, right. right? Then we go back to an issue which does not matter whether it's a new curriculum mm -hmm. or an old curriculum, right. which is access to education for mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. There are some children who are getting assistance mm -hmm. from government or right. from other non-governmental organizations. Mm -hmm. There are some children who are failing to get assistance. Mm -hmm either from anyone at any level, right. some in primary school, mm -hmm. some in secondary mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. Government should ensure that there should not be a child who has failed to meet a criteria of a right. certain organization or mm -hmm. of a government program to right. a point where they fail to access education. I think that is one thing that the government needs to fix. They should in this not be, dispensation? Yes, and it should not be up to the... It should not be allowed that a child is sitting at home mm -hmm. because either the parents have not been forthcoming mm -hmm. in in admitting that we cannot afford to take our children mm. to school. Then also the quality of the schools, because mm. from the child protection sector, mm -hmm. when a child is in school, mm -hmm. we need to be sure that right, the school is right, safe exactly. for the child to be there. Mm -hmm. And we have had a number of new schools mm. mushrooming. Some of mm. them are good schools in terms of the mm. standards, the mm. food that your children mm. eat, the chair that your child mm. sits on. But to what level is that school? To mm. what extent are those teachers equipped enough mm. to provide their wow. child with, with child protection. Deep stuff. Thank you very much, Daphne. You bring out a lot of issues that are important, issues of inclusivity in the school system. You probably know about the campaign that um, was launched every child in school to make sure that every child is made into school. You even talk about child protection while they're in school, the mushrooming schools that probably are private schools. To what level are they uh, protective of children? To what level is the government insisting on child protection measures? How, to what level are the teachers trained to deal with children? Reverend, back to you. Um, when it comes to teacher training, right. my input to this would be that um, when it comes to corporal punishment, mm -hmm. it is important that uh, at teacher training level, mm -hmm. uh, we begin to see the curriculum speak to alternative ways of discipline right. children. Okay. So, so that, that speaks into the protection that definitely yeah. Yes. Okay. And the other issue is that mm -hmm. um, when you look at the SDGs, mm -hmm. Sustainable right. Development Goal, uh, it talks about leave no one behind. behind. Right. And in this Zimbabwe scenario, um, we are leaving a lot of children behind right. by virtue of them not having birth certificates. Mm -hmm. And this originates from their parents mm -hmm. who also do not have any documentation. Right. And my uh, take is that government through its parliament 
has to have a cutoff point mm -hmm. where it says by, for example, by 2016, mm. any parent mm. who does not have mm. an identity card, right. a birth certificate, mm. they must be given right. that document because then they're able to register all their children mm. after that. And when we do that, we ensure that everyone enjoy their rights as a citizen of this country. You are saying a profound issue that is an issue of human rights and an issue that we need to urgently address in this new dispensation, the issue of identity, in issues of birth certificates, issues of national IDs. I remember you just uh, the day before yesterday, I wanted to pay someone who had done a service for me on EcoCash, and I asked that lady, can I, excuse me, can I EcoCash for you? And she said, I don't have EcoCash. And I said, why? And she said that because I don't have a birth certificate or I don't have an ID. That is very sad. And I think what you're bringing, Reverend, is very profound that I think this is quite a, a straightforward recommendation from the Ministry of, of Labor and Social Welfare, if it's still the same ministry or whoever is the relevant ministry, to make sure that we, we put in place measures to protect our people, to ensure that they have dignity, self-dignity, and have access to resources like everybody else through identity, through birth certificates. So I do feel like what you're proposing, Reverend, maybe even to date, because you'll find that their, their children were born maybe two, three weeks ago and their parent does not have birth certificates. So you need to correct that. I don't know. But I think that's a very profound um, profound re recommendation. Daphne, what would be the two, three things that you would recommend the government to do as far as we put the children at the center of the dispensation? Uh, the first thing I would ask the government to do is to pick up from where the last cabinet left right. when we were when they were addressing an issue of stiff penalties for people who sexually abuse children mm -hmm. and who sexually abused women. I am so sure the last cabinet uh, had a report with their recommendations. Mm -hmm. I am not sure whether that was picked up by the new cabinet mm -hmm. and parliament or not, mm -hmm. but I think this is an issue that needs to be folded right. because if we right now we are close to elections. If that doesn't, if that is not addressed again, we are going to be having a changeover, and we are going to start from scratch because that is an issue that has stretched for long. So that is the first thing I would really need to, uh, I would really need for government to address, and also for all children in Zimbabwe to have access to reporting mechanisms. Mm -hmm. That is platforms where they can call, uh, platforms where they can report any mm -hmm. issues without having to go through various protocols. Because in some cases, mm -hmm. children do not have access to the reporting mechanisms that we as an organization right, try right. to provide. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Briefly, Reverend, what are the key issues that you'd want the government to take into consideration at the center of the dispensation regarding children? I've already spoken to the issue of... Uh, Sexual reproductive health rights. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. the issue of uh, alignment of laws. Yes. Um, then increased budgets for children. Right, increased budgets for children. That benefits children direct. Right, right. Not through teacher salaries, or, mm -hmm. but, you know, what you give to the child right. is part of education, whether it's in books, um, provision of classrooms, mm -hmm. That is important. And to reduce the teacher ratio okay. uh, within schools. Mm -hmm. It's gone beyond a, a teacher to 40 children. Right. It's way, way beyond Higher than that. that. You had it for yourself, viewers, from the need for children to be in school to the issues of alignment of our laws, the issues of making sure that children have better certificates, sexual reproductive health rights of children, making sure that children are participating in decision-making processes. Until next time, people, take care of the children. Bye for now.